Oh no! I don't get it. It's okay. You get it. <laughs> I was like, "Yes, Lord, come on with the cancellations." <laughs> Whew, we going in it now. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I'm black. Uh, am I good? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> he's with the best of them. And he's oh, one of my God. favorite men at Cup Alpha Psi. That intro sounds like much more than who I actually am. <laughs> My guest of honor is a woman of God that loves to love on others. She's a devoted mother, an entrepreneur, and a soon-to-be college graduate. She currently serves as a peer leader, student ambassador, co-leader of higher education, and was recently named Student Employee of the Year. She's a servant leader that uses the lessons God teaches her to inspire everyone she connects with. And as a mentor and coach, she assists others in understanding the importance of discovering themselves and their purpose. She's been called to encourage the masses through her women's empowerment ministry and business, Live Sis. So my guest of honor understands the importance of using every moment to magnify God and maximize on every opportunity. Today, my guest of honor is Ralisha Bowles. How you doing? I am blessed. Yes, <laughs> OMG, I am blessed. <laughs> and apparently, listen, I got, I got something to say. <laughs> you do. You do. Uh, it, is, <laughs> it is definitely an honor, a privilege, and a blessing to be joining you on today, sis. I am so happy, long awaited. <laughs> hey, it's right on time. Right, right on, on time. time. <laughs> right on time. Yes. Yes, well, I'm happy to have I'm happy to have you. Um, like I'm very grateful that you gave me your yes and that God made sure it happened. So we're gonna make it do what it do. <laughs> yes, we will. Yes, we will. Well, I want to start off by asking you a little bit about your background. Could you tell us where you're from and where everything started at? All right. Well, I am from Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, born and raised. I am uh, from the south side of Fort Worth, Texas, as a matter of fact, to be a little bit more specific. So I grew up in a community that had definitely a lot to offer um, and just um, uh, cultivated in so many different things, different aspects of life. Uh, so I come from a background of people who are... Uh, surviving you know people who are are striving thriving uh, thriving and all the things you know so uh south side of forward texas born and raised i went to all of my schooling uh on the south side of fort worth as far as um grade school so morning mm -hmm. side elementary morning side middle and then, of course, I'm a triple peg bulldog. Can you know? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> Already, so triple peg bulldog, and so that's where uh, my upbringing took place. So that's my background. Yes. Look, she she from that south side. You know, I'm from <laughs> south side too. Uh, you know, greatness. I, greatness. Greatness. Just it just it just permeates in the yeah. south side. You know, but <laughs> but um, I. I love that you went to school uh, in your area in in the, on the South Side, and you were able to, you know, be in the community and like really get raised by you know the community. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you, you know, with us being from the South Side, we saw a lot of things that oh, we yes. may not should have seen. But could you tell me how being in that space really like helps you to kind of like come into your own? Like, what? How did the environment teach you to become you? Absolutely. That's a really great question with a lot of power behind it, because um, one of the things that you hear people say often is you don't have to be a product of where you're from. But I'm proud to be a product of where I'm from because it gave me the opportunity to see things, like you said, that were um, not so pretty and things mm -hmm. that were not always good and perfect. And so I was exposed to things that I was able to look at and say, I want better. I want more. Um, not only that, but I want to make a difference because this is reality. It's not just happening on the south side of Fort Worth. It's happening in every um, city, state, neighborhood, community. And so I feel that if I had not been exposed to some of those things, that it would not have 
um, given me the opportunity to see a, a spectrum of I want more. You know, it, it motivates me. It you know, and not all things were not good coming from the south side. I mean, you get love, definitely. Yeah, you get love. It, <laughs> You yeah, know, the hospitality, uh, you get that. And not only that, but you also get, um, now we talk about raising, you know, um, needing a village, you know. And so that's one thing that I can say on the South Side. You're going to go and you're going to have family everywhere. That's my cousin. That's, you know, you have family, you have support, um, you have structure, you know. You oh, have yeah. a lot of things that um, contribute to your why. And so the, it, 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 it motivates me. Um, it rooted me because there were things that I feel like I'm privileged to know being exposed to things, on the, you know, uh, from the South side. So, uh, so many, so many <laughs> different things. <laughs> yeah. The, the South side will definitely raise you. And I mean, just Fort Worth in general, but I love that you said that you mentioned um, it takes a village, you know, yeah. to raise yeah. raise a kid, raise a child. But back then, I feel like that was a very uh, a prominent thing to say or people would actually do it. Nowadays, yeah. I feel like it's a lot harder to have the village because as we've grown up, we've started to do this, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. spread and we don't come back. So um, I wanted to ask you, since you are from you did go to Trimble Tech, mm-hmm. did you feel the same? kind of like village and love at the institution or did you that as you felt in the on the south side or do you was it different you know what i'm gonna say this first so <laughs> at every family uh gathering at every holiday that our family were together you gonna hear i'll be a bulldog who be you <laughs> i'll be a bulldog too too too, too. because <laughs> Almost everyone in my family graduated from Trimble Tech. Of course, we have some Wildcats. We have some Chaparrales. We have, you know, Polly Paris. But a <laughs> lot of my family graduated from Trimble Tech. So what I will say is I already kind of had an expectation about Good. Trimble Tech. But for me to have experienced things that I experienced at Morningside Elementary and then at Morningside Middle, that shift from the South Side to Trimble Tech, I guess that would be like Central Fort Worth with it, like mm-hmm. downtown. Okay, downtown. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, and so and it's not really if you ever visited or been to Trumbull Tech, it's not really like a part of any neighborhood. You can't say oh Trumbull Tech like Polly. You can say oh Polly or Wyatt. Okay, Southside, but like Trumbull Tech was central, and there was really like no neighborhood. It's like near a hospital in like the you know cultural district area, and so what yeah. I will say is it did shift me. Um, and I'm so grateful for that opportunity because again, it gave me the opportunity to see a different spectrum, you know? Um, and I think that's for me and I, I probably for a lot of Trump would take bulldogs, but it like, it's, you still were able to have that South side feeling, but then it was like a more, um, broader, if you would say, or like maybe like a more cultural, a more, um, it was pivotal. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was shifty. But at yeah. the same time, I'm from the South Side. You know, it's in me. But uh I would say that yeah, it, it was a shift, but it was definitely something that was that I was able to embrace because I had expectations from my family um perspective and then I also had um I was ready. You know, yeah. I was ready for something. Um, you know, you're not just gonna go to Trimble Tech and not get an education. You're gonna you're gonna have to be ready, be up for the task, you know. And so I was ready. Yeah, <laughs> Trimble. For for those of you who don't know, Trimble Tech was a school that you had to apply for, and it was a school that pretty much um, anybody from any neighborhood could come to this school if they got in. So they did focus a lot on like rig- uh, educational academic rigor. Um, yes. there was a lot of different cultures there, a lot of different, you know, events and things like that. And I, I, I had to ask that question because I know for me, tech was pivotal because I was exposed to so many different types of people. Yes. Um, so I wanted to ask you, is that where your, your love for people started or did it start early on when you were a kid? 
So I think for me, love, I was raised around love, with love, in love. Um, you know, I've heard people say that some people are raised out survival and some people mm-hmm. are raised out love. Um, I was raised uh, from love. Uh, my mother, my grandmother, I can remember days that my grandmother, people would come to her house and they're hungry and she's stop, she'll stop what she's doing to feed them. She owned a cafe on the South Side. So people knew who she was and definitely could cook. Um, yeah. and so, <laughs> so my grandma was going to go down. So they're coming and when they're coming and these are just people, you know, in the neighborhood, you know who Miss Billy is on the South Side and they come and she feeds them. So um, my grandmother was a giver. My mom, same thing. She was a caregiver and uh, is a caregiver. And, you know, I was raised that way. Uh, so love was planted. It was rooted. It, it's been since I can remember. And as far as loving and caring for other people, again, that is something that I was I was raised, taught, rooted. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It started at a young age. How, how has that how has that impacted you as a mother? Like Ooh. your style and when you're with you oh uh, your mother and style. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so let me tell you. So I have a son, Kaysen, he's five, you know that. Uh Kaysen is the most loving person. We go places and when I tell you it's not just him showing love, but it's people falling in love with him. Like I learned early in motherhood that I'm going to have to protect this child because everywhere that we go, people are like seriously wanting to take him. <laughs> oh my God, he's so sweet. Come on, you were Aww. helping. Um, and then not only that, but just uh, becoming a better mother every day, he's very supportive. He's very, um, he's very in tune you know, if if I'm, he can, he feels things, he sees things, he's very open with his, um, with his speech. If he thinks something, feels something, he's going to ask questions, he's going to, uh, he's my cheerleader, you know? So, uh, being a mother and, uh, being raised in love and with love, it is a blessing. I thank my mom all the time. I'm telling her, like, mom, you know, because as mothers, we're doing our best, right? And so I think that one thing that is very important, especially when we get, uh, when we're older, we need to share with our mother um, the things that we are very thankful for that help us as mothers. So mm-hmm. if I did not have that love from my mother, Kaysen would not be the loving son that he is. You know why? Because I wouldn't know how to give that love and instill that love in him. So I thank my mother for that. And I can see that was one of the things that um, I was before becoming a mother, I was praying about because I'm like, okay, God, am I really ready for this? You know, um, finding out I was pregnant and things like that. Am I really ready for this task? Okay, well, I know that he came from you. But then I look at my mother and how she's been to me. And I remember telling my mother, uh, she was in the hospital with me when I was giving birth to Casey. And I said, I'm not worried about if I'm going to be a good mother or not because I was raised by a good mother. So yes, I'm going to have to put the work in myself, but I'm a product of you and you're a great mother. So I know that Kaysen is going to have a great mother. And he does. And so he (laughs) is, he's very loving. And I, and I, I can see the reflection of the love that I show him and how he is with me and with other people because he's already caring for other people, giving, loving, that's just him. So, yeah. That's so beautiful. I I love that he um is already naturally exuding what you've taught him. Yes. And he learned it by watching y'all. Yes. I mean, of course he gets his heart from God, mm-hmm. but the way that that heart is cultivated is through what he sees every day. Every so, day. I love that he's already like exuding that at 5. You know yes. like at 5. At, at 5. five. So, it, next thing you know, he's gonna be touching and agreeing and praying, yeah. praying over does, everybody. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't know. already. He doesn't know. That's what yeah, I'm talking about, Casey. Know. Yeah, when we're uh, we today at the church, we 
uh, went to eat lunch with a family, my sister and my niece, and I said, come on, Case, and pray. And he prays, and the first thing he said is, God, I thank you for my mother, my niece, my uh, my auntie. You know, Aww. he, oh, girl. Oh, my that, gosh. That my, <laughs> wow, that's so good. <laughs> it's, he's so loving. It's hard to give him tough love. When I give him yeah. tough love, I be sitting there like, oh, you know, because he's just so loving. But when I have, you know, discipline, is love. it's a part of love. And so when I have mm-hmm. to discipline him because it's my responsibility to do that, you know, uh, then you, it, it's tough for me because I'm like, okay, Casey, okay, so I don't want to have to, you know, <laughs> discipline you like this. Because he's so sweet. And even even in disciplining him, the child is like, okay, mommy, I know. Like, like okay. <laughs> so cute. That's that's yeah. so good, man. Yeah. That, that makes me think of, like, you know, how God shows us different things through our experiences, right? So, like, um, I know that God teaches you a lot of lessons through parenting. And just, you know, just navigating this life. So, if you had to give any advice on, you know, parents giving themselves grace or allowing yourself to like grow through being a parent Mm. um what would you say to those people i would say listen to the words that come out of your mouth when you're talking to your children it's very Mm. important and i want to say this i'm so glad that you mentioned that because god gives us scriptures and he gives us words about responsibilities as parents and so the thing is i can't oh my god I'm just getting chills thinking about it. Uh, One of the things that have really helped me to grow in motherhood is listening to what I'm saying when I'm talking to Kaysen. I just want you to visualize this. God is our father, right? So whenever he's talking to us, he, we're his children. He's talking to us in a manner of love and of discipline. So it's so funny because when I say things to Kaysen, like, Kaysen, I'm trying to show you what you should be doing so that you know you don't hurt yourself or so that you're not getting in trouble what then i'm thinking to myself that's what god is saying to me mm-hmm. or then i tell him casey you're being hard-headed or casey you're not listening put your listening ears on god is saying Ralisha, you're not listening to me i've told you time and time you know and so like really listen to the things you say and be mindful of the things that you say to your children because they take it to heart whether you think so or not, the things that you say, it cultivates them um, and it captures them. And sometimes mm-hmm. it can also, this is very hard, you know, it's, it's hard to take in, but it can also, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, um, bond them. Like, it can keep them stuck in a space that they're yeah. trying to constantly get out of because of something that you simply said to them. You 20 know, years ago. 20 years ago, you said something that they really took to heart and even they could never have brought it up to you again in those 20 years, but you said it, it planted and it rooted it, 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 itself into them. And 20 years later, they're still reflecting on these things. And so we have to be mindful. And we have to be very careful about the things that we say. And then on the flip side of that, we have to be mindful and careful of the things that we say to encourage them. Because the the same way, someone else can tell them something and it you know, they don't it doesn't bother them. But as a parent, we say something to them like, You got this, or you can do this, or don't worry about that. And it, it takes it take part the same way. They take it to heart the same way. So encourage mm-hmm. your children um, and be mindful and careful of the things you say. And keep in mind when you're speaking to them to be listening and hear God saying those things to you as his mm-hmm. child. And that will help you. Or I can say it's helped me to, to do what I just said, do be mindful. Because when I'm telling him, like, you know, come on, Casey, you know, or, you know, all those things. And not only that, but it's. Uh, being a parent takes patience. And I'm telling you, God has been so patient with me because when I mess up or when I keep doing the same thing or when I, okay, they're a child, so we're teaching them. 
And we have to understand that they're learning from us, like you said. So if it's something that they're continuously doing and we're telling them or asking them not to do something or to do something, understand that we can't prioritize things in a certain manner and want them to prioritize it as a first priority. Uh, Today, something that our pastor said at church was, he said, you can't prioritize God as your fourth priority and expect your child to make him their first priority. They're mm-hmm. going to watch you. And so I know that I'm answering this question like in, in, a, in, a, in a wide uh, format, but I just want to make sure that, that that is something that I'm definitely speaking because that's been my testament. Like, it is tough. It is challenging. You do have to have patience. But think about how God is with us as his children. And what you want to plan in your children, you can absolutely, you are their roadmap to success. Whatever you plan in them right now while they're growing up, no matter if they're a, a, a toddler or a teenager, whatever you're putting in them right now, you're going to see it. And they're going to see it in their adulthood. And so as parents, we're responsible to make sure that we're not passing them a baton and saying, here, deal with this when you get older. Or you're going to see this and you can no, let's let's deal with this right now together while you have somebody that's guiding you and you're able to have them listen to you because they're waiting. They want to listen to you. So be careful about what you uh, putting into them and what you letting them get from the outside world. Absolutely. I, yeah. I will say, I will say that, you know, when it comes to like watching a uh, parent's parent, <laughs> I think a lot of parents, I think a lot of parents tend to operate out of fear because of things that they may have went through or just things that they're afraid of that may happen to their children. And I think it's important to to remind parents that if you trust God, you have to trust him with everything, you know, even your children, because he gave yeah. you the, the kids. So he trusts you with the kid. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, and a lot. Of, and sometimes the parents do the flip side of I didn't have anything. So I'm going to give you everything. So I'm yes. glad that you mentioned like mm-hmm. discipline and being willing to like give them encouragement and also be strong with them too, because at the end of the day, you're preparing them to be world explorers out yeah. here. Yeah. And if they're not uh, in a in a state where they understand how to uh, deny their flesh and like wrangle themselves in, they're going to find themselves in a lot of trouble. So okay. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um okay. So I want to I want to ask you about the fruits of the spirit and I also want to ask you about your relationship with God. So tell me what do, what role does God play in your life? God is the head. You know, I I love uh when I was reflecting on my preparation email and uh one of the questions about that, I ain't even gonna lie sis. We, you know, we learned so many words and vocabulary and definitions growing up, but as an adult, I've learned that I have to go back and look mm-hmm. at definition of these words because what someone taught me then and the way that I received it and applied it as a, as a part of my vocabulary, I'm looking at now in my adult life and I'm like, that hit different. I got, you know, it hit different now. Let me go and it does. define this so I can define it and apply it in the way that I need to in my life now. So I said that to say when I went and looked at the definition of role. Mm-hmm. You know, and that that assignment and that, you know, the uh, part that God plays in my life. And I had to make sure that I, I answered that. And it's, it's simple. He's the head. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I mean by that is you got to think about it. Everything starts with the head. Mm-hmm. Everything starts from top to bottom, you know, and it trickles down. And so everything starts with a thought. You know, so it's like, so I have to understand that, um, and I try so hard to make sure that whenever there's a thought that comes in my mind because God is the head, I'm going, okay, God, you know, is this something that is coming from me? Is this coming from you? Where is it coming from? What are we going to do with this thought? And so he 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 plays the role. He is the head and because it's no playing he don't play he don't play about me he don't play (laughs) (laughs) so he is he is the head and so he's the head of my life and uh and you know we hear that in church uh when they praying as kids in church uh i I give an honor to god who's the head of my life but now like no seriously he is Mm -hmm. he's the head yeah and i'm i feel like a lot of people say it but they don't act it Mm-hmm. They don't act like it. So mm-hmm. it's 
it's important to, you know, make sure that those words and your actions match up. So um, if, if God is the head of your life, I want to ask you about like how that materializes in your life through the fruits of your spirit. Like how, how does his word and his will and his ways manifest or materialize in your life? So um, first off, by leading, you know, um, I, I know what it feels like to be spirit led. You know, um, so that's the very first thing to me, because you have to have an open spirit. You know, the word tells us that we are created in his image and then also that we are beautifully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. And both of those words have meaning. You know, you look at beautiful. I think about um, Jabella, God's beautiful. But you uh, but you you look at that word in itself and it tells you that he's created you to be something that's much more uh, bigger than what the eye can see. You know, yeah. beauty is uh, is a word that describes and distinguishes so much. And so you have to see yourself through God's eyes. And so wonderfully made as in you don't even know the things that God has placed inside of you. It's a wonder. He's a wonder. And so with those two things, know that you're beautiful. Know that you are um, you are created with things inside of you that you have to let show, you know. And so um, I said that to say that the way that God cultivated me is by letting me feel his spirit. You know, just understanding that whenever your spirit led to do something that obedience is always better than sacrifice and what i mean by spirit led is you feel something you feel a uh some people will say like you feel a um what is this this like when somebody taps you or something like that like you feel a nudge okay yeah a nudge uh, or yeah. jolt yeah yeah One yeah of the two. And it's like, or it can just be in your heart or it can just be a thought you know um that's an indication um, and so what I mean by being moved is like I've been in places and something happened and um, instantly it's like, go over here and do this. And you be mm-hmm. obedient and you do that. And then the thing, the reason why I know it is God is because I don't know this person. But then yep. I walk over and this person is like, oh my God, you're, you got to be an angel or, oh my God, how'd you know? Or, you know. That's how you know. And so when God started doing that to me more and more and more, and just the joy that you get from allowing God to use you and being obedient, and you literally, it's not me. It's not me. I I would have passed by that person because, but then even in instances on uh, things like, you know, I'm a motivational speaker. So whenever I'm up speaking, there have been times that I've gone up, I pray, I go up and speak and come and sit down and don't know any of the words that came out of my mouth. I'm going, okay, yep. God. But that's because I've talked to him and I've asked him, I say, God, you know, I want I want them to hear you, you know, speak through me. The words that I say today, let it be of you. Before uh, getting on here today, I pray. I said, this is a conversation mm-hmm. with my sis. I said, but God, I want you to use me. I want you to have me to say the things that you want me to say. It's yeah. not about me, you know? Um, because we don't know. God knows what people are dealing with, what they're going through, what they need. All we need to do is be an available vessel. And he's going to use us. And it's always going to be what's best. And so, and trust me, it took me some times because, and I'm still on that journey of being obedient. Um, because sometimes when we get in self and we want to do things our way, it never goes our way, honestly. But when mm-hmm. we allow God to use us and we just trust him, um, and we're free in his spirit, like it it always go. And you like, man, and so that's on my spiritual journey and like you said, the fruits of the spirit, definitely being um spirit led and then love, you know, um, man, God love on me. He loves on me and he sent people to love on me. Like Kay yeah. said, me and Kay sit here all the time by ourselves, he can see it. And sometimes he give me space because he's like, uh and sometimes he coming there and he just give me love, you know. Oh. Uh it's 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 amazing. And so definitely uh dealing with the fruits of the spirit is something that is whew, it can be miraculous it's if you let it. It's tough. And that's why I, said I wanted to, you know, I wanted to think of the positive side of it, but honestly it is. 
Got to tell both sides. I'm telling you this, but it's also something that that allows transformation to happen in your life. Absolutely. Because we don't know. All of us have our own personality. But when you look at what the scripture says about the fruits of the spirit, oh my God. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it, it's it's a it's a yeah. real demand on like basically god is not playing he basically is saying look you say you want to follow jesus christ yeah okay so that means you're gonna have to deny yourself yeah. even when you want to be petty you know any even when you when you want to do these things you gotta remember who you represent because right. at the end of the day y'all not gonna be out here looking having me look crazy no, that's, no, that's no. what god is basically no, no, no. saying no. um and it, <laughs> it's real, yeah. I think I think that it's good though that that you mentioned that there there's always a backside to the blessing and there's always, you know, responsibility attached to being a part of the kingdom. Yeah. We we have we got an assignment to do. We do. And do. it requires you to be of sound mind and making sure that you have sound character. Yes, so ma'am. the fruits of the spirit just acts as a protectant mm-hmm. to help you to make sure that you're in alignment. It's like the barriers mm-hmm. that keep you like in line. <laughs> and that's how I see it. I always be like, um, you could go this way. Oh. Um, but, but the fact that I have, you know, reverence and, uh, and I love God that much and I know why he put me here keeps me here, yeah. you know, yeah. so and there's nothing better than being used by God. Um, like, Especially, we know it's him because it's something we don't want to do. <laughs> like a lot of times, you be like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, like, what? Me? You're like me, 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 <laughs> oh, no, okay. And you know, I'm glad that you mentioned that because, um, in my calling, you know, and I and I just want to say I thank God for that. It it be so yeah. many things that I just get so like emotional about that I be thanking God for because I can say that there have been times in my life that I did not have the vision and the insight that I have now. And so now that I do, it is responsibility, but it's also fulfilling. And it's also like a blessing because you, God shows you how much he loves you or how much he thinks of you and that he, what he's created you for. And even at the tender age of 35, I'm always thankful because here I am thinking, that there are people in my generation or just people who know their purpose. And when I start to ask some of these questions, when I'm in our meetings for uh, women empowerment, or if I'm speaking or if I'm mentoring, um, I'm asking, do you know what your purpose is? Do you know what your gifts are? Do you know um, the reason why you are here? You know, all of those things and um, realizing that some people really don't, but also having grace for them and and feeling exciting and wanting them to know and then going and going, thank you, God, because I remember when I didn't know, you know, yeah. and so I'm grateful that I know now. Yes, I do have a responsibility because now that I know, I know what I know <laughs> and there's still mm-hmm. more to learn. But now that I know what I know, now I have to walk in it, you know, yeah. and, and that is a privilege. And so maybe I'll say I get to walk in it because at first I was just doing things. You hear me doing what I want, doing what other people wanted and just doing any and everything. But now, because I know, you know, um, it, it's open my eyes to my destiny. It's helped me to dream more, you know? Yeah. And so I want, I, it, that's the whole purpose. And what I do is because I want people to have their dreams unlocked and being able to see their destiny based off of what they know about who God is calling them to be. Yeah. yeah when you put sure. out, you are called that the episode that you put out, oh, that touched me. I sent that to about 500 people. I don't even know 500 <laughs> people, but I sent it there right now because it's so prevalent. And I just, I feel like if more people were able to really tap in, like you and I have talked about, like tap into what God is trying to get them to see that we'll have more people who are focused on walking in their calling. And then it would eliminate a lot of the things that we see in the world today. It, it really would. Yeah. But um, so I think that it's, it's so important when it comes to purpose and when it comes to, you know, thinking about trying to discover your purpose or why you're here that you understand that there are, there's always like a a certain level of pain that comes with that because Mm -hmm. people think that we get to these points and we don't experience anything, but in real life we go through a series 
of things. It's like yeah. a process to get us like, you know, the refinement process. So if you had to like pinpoint anything that happened or something that you would like to speak to that um that kind of caused you to kind of go through this process and get you to the point where you are today. Ooh, that's 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 good, sis. That's deep because there are so many pieces, so many things, so many processes um, mm-hmm. that contributed to the woman that I am today. You know, I yeah. have not always been her. Um, yeah. I can say so many things from from people who have poured into my life to struggles that I've had to overcome. Mm-hmm. Um, to lessons that I've had to learn, repeated cycles that I've had to break. Come on, you want me to keep going? Because today, let me tell you how Pastor Micah at the house church today, he talked about, um, that's not mine. And it's mm. the truth, the truth about generational curses. And I yeah. can't wait until next week to he talks about the truth about generational blessings because it's flip sides, right? It's both, just like you said, good and evil. So, yeah. okay. So, I, and I said that as an introduction because I'm, I'm reflecting on a way that I can just pinpoint one thing. Um, definitely the moment that I decided to follow Christ. Um, definitely the moment that I decided to give my life to Christ. Surrendering is tough. And so I can say that I'm still on a journey. I was a teenager when, uh, cause I, I, you know, like I said, I was raised in church, but I would just go to church because my mama was like, you going to church, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, cause that's, you know, she was raised in a church, but it's one thing to go to church and it's a whole other thing to have a spiritual walk with Christ. And I'm yeah. not even talking about going to church. I'm talking about really seeking him for yourself. The word tells us that we must seek Ye first, seek him first, and then everything else that we desire and we want will be added to him. Not all things, because some things it's not meant for us to have, but the things that God has for us, we will receive them, but we have to seek him. So definitely that. uh, And I'll say that took place maybe in like, uh, maybe when I was a teenager. Again, I I had been going to church since I was a girl, um, as far as I can remember. But then as a teenager was when I really started to serve God, um, I had a youth pastor, uh, Pastor John Reed, and uh, he would, I mean, he was very supportive. He done, he's he been at Trimble Tech, uh, you know, pushing me as far as my education and then in church, uh, serving in the church. He was kind of like a father figure to me. No, you going to serve, you know? <laughs> and so uh, even to this day, I'm thankful uh, because I had uh, people in my life that, especially my mother, that uh, gave me gave me Jesus, you know? And so I say as a teenager, that was when I really was like, okay, I want to know more for myself about who God is. But then I would re- just say recently in like the last two to three years, um, maybe not even that long, I say one to two years, um, list this was established in 2021, but just really getting to the point where I wanted to know God for myself because we go to church and we hear preachers preach and they give us scripture. They throw out a few scriptures here and there and we go and read them, but actually reading God's word. And so I can say that recently, like in the last year or two was when I really was like, I've been going to church, you know, um, I hear preachers preach. I take my notes. I, I go and read the scriptures that they give me, but to actually go and say, God, listen, I'm struggling with this right now. Can you lead me to scripture that's going to help me support because the Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. So this is basically telling us the things um, that we can apply in our daily lives to help us with these struggles, with these processes, yep. with the problems, right? And so, um, and I, and I, you know, I don't want to, you know, put something out there that's not a truth because you have to be consistent and disciplined when it comes down to doing this because it's not always that my mind is like, oh, you struggling, go to the word of God. No, it's not like that. It was like, oh, you struggling, go to Facebook and get some inspiration. Right. Oh, you struggling, go to Instagram. It's a reel that's going to bring your spirits up. But I have to in the middle of the night, I can, like, roll over, pick up my phone and say, uh-uh, and have to put that phone down and get the word because that's when I know God is trying to talk to me. 
Um, and so I want to put that out there. It's not easy. It's not simple. It's going to take consistency. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take sacrifice and all of those things. But trust me, obedience is better than sacrifice. The woman that I see that everyone else sees today, it didn't happen, like you said, just on a whim. It really took some time and some effort and some tears and some struggles. And so to pinpoint, I would say that is it. Um, I would say that it just recently happened. Um, 2021, me and my son was in a car accident on 820. That's to me, I say that's the highway that claimed many, many lives. Every exactly. time I pass by that space on 820 where it happened, where the accident happened, I go there often. At first, I was afraid to go, but I said, God protected me. Mm -hmm. I remember when the accident happened on 820, but every time I pass by that spot, I say, thank you, Jesus. Case in mm -hmm. two, thank you, Jesus. Because 820 tried to claim my life, but God claimed it and got the victory because I stood outside of 820 and said, devil, you tried it and you can't have me. But to me, that accident shifted everything. And I'm going to tell you, sis, so yes, live sis, sis, living in victory every day, sisters impacting and serving, or those are the acronyms for live sis. But I launched Live Sis on January 29th. On January 27th, me and Kaysen was in a life-threatening accident two days before. Yeah, because he already knew. I had no idea. I was just listening to what God said. And so on the 27th, me and Kaysen had a bad car accident. But then uh, on January 29th, I still was in the house of the Lord, lunch and live, sis. And when I say that lunch was something amazing, I had no idea that it was going to be what it was. Uh, mm -hmm. But God did. So I stood in the middle of, uh, of 820, and I cried, and I stumped on the ground, and the paramedics didn't know what was going on. So much happened. That's for another day, testimony. But um, <laughs> it was angels that was there. It was only God. When the paramedics showed up on the scene, he said, I call these because it was like the, um, I can't think of what they're called right now, but they put them up on 820 because so many car accidents had happened. Mm -hmm. But um, we spun around in the middle of 820 and like when I, we were headed towards the other side of traffic, but then we, we ended up against the ropes. And so he said, I call these the ropes of lives. He said, I call these the lifesavers. That's what the uh, paramedic said. But um, I said that to say that in the midst of everything that I was going through, God allowed me to see that no matter what I what I uh, experience, that I would be able to endure because he has his protection around me. And so on the 27th, that happened. On the 29th, I lunch, And from there, I've been on a journey of getting closer to God and knowing who he is and knowing what he's capable of and what he's creating me for. And so that was my pivotal shift. And then I can speak of one other thing, and that's um, my my family. And so my son, my son, uh, I can really say if I had not uh, become a mother uh, when I when I did, I was thirty. I'm thirty five mm -hmm. now, but becoming a mother shifted and changed my life because I get to see a reflection of what's inside of me, you know. And so when I see those things. Uh, I can remember a time where Casey said something. I said something to him, and then he said, whatever. And I said, mm -hmm. I said, whatever. Where you get that from? He said, mommy. And then I started thinking to myself, do I say whatever? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to have to change that. Because <laughs> that ain't he. But I, I'm so grateful that I was able to take that from him and yeah. hold myself accountable and that opened up a whole other lens of like, that was just a whatever. I wonder what else I'm showing him. That mm -hmm. And you hear people all the time. I remember someone that I was mentoring and she was saying, you know, why is it that my, you know, I don't know, my child won't communicate with me or my child is always screaming. And I said, well, how do you communicate with them? And then she said, well, I do scream and I do. And I said, well, they, they mimic what they see. Yeah, and, yeah, and so I, it is, it, man. This journey of learning God, learning who I am, becoming a better mother, a better daughter, a better sister, leader, wife, all these things, um, and definitely uh, meeting my husband. My husband has been someone that has taught me so, 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 so much, and I'm so grateful. 
for him. Um, and I've already talked to you about my wonderful mother. I've had mm-hmm. mentors, friends, you, me and you have had conversations that have been inspirational. So the people that God have put in my life. So that's what I mean by family, community, TCC community. Oh my goodness, I can't speak enough about them. Uh, but, you know, family, community, and then getting to know God better. Those are definitely two things in my life right now that's holding me down, that's building me up, you know? <laughs> so, yes. And that was yeah. a long yeah. answer to your question, but it's been so many things since I thank God that I don't look like what I've been through. I've been through abuse. I've been through rape. I've been through molestation. I've experienced obesity. I, so many things. Mental health. I cannot tell you. See a therapist because therapy has helped me. Mm-hmm. So many therapy. things. But the grace of God. Listen. Woo. Mm-mm. No, seriously though, there was never there was never going to be a short answer to that question anyway. Like I didn't <laughs> expect that at all, but you did exactly you did exactly what I wanted you to do. Yeah, no, you did exactly what I wanted you to do because like people think that you know they'll look at somebody like you or look at somebody like me and be like they have it all together when in reality we don't. We just know who to submit to, and that helps us to be able to like make it through, right? And to be able to um. <laughs> He gives us the gra- the grace and the strength to get through everything that we're going through. But I wanted I wanted people to see that it's a process to get into this uh, mindset. It's a process to get into that um, level of like stability in your heart and in your space. Yeah. And you have to be very very intentional about what you do, mm-hmm. what you take in, and you got to be intentional about holding yourself accountable for everything beforehand. So like going back and retrieving the value from the pain. And, you know, like, you have to go back and do that. Because if you yes. don't, if you hold on to the past and hold on to the pain, you're never going to um, grow. You're going to be that same two-year-old, or that same 10-year-old, and you're 36. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted them to hear that you've had a journey. And as you go through these different, as different people go through different three, different things, mm-hmm. it's going to birth in you something that you would never imagine. Oh, so take the pain as joy. You know, take it. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be okay after a while. You'll see, live a little bit longer and you'll yeah. see that everything you went through was for your good. It, yeah. If it's not, God will use it for your good. Too, Joy so. and pain <laughs> are like right. sunshine and rain. <laughs> that's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. So, so I, I think that that's amazing. Like I, he, he kept you through it all and it's a very re- a good reason for it. You're, like your purpose. Um, So I want you to tell... Everybody, you already broke down your the acronym for your business, but I want you to tell them a little bit more about your purpose and what you're aiming to, to accomplish through the ministry that God gave you. Okay, definitely. So I definitely want to start by just addressing anyone out there who, um, I don't want you to feel um, ignorant, or I don't want you to feel like you're undeserving of knowing what your purpose is. Because purpose, we all have the same purpose. If nobody has ever told you that, we have one Mm -hmm. purpose, and that's to serve God. And how do you serve God? By serving his people. So let me break that down to you. So our purpose is to be a servant. We're servants, okay? So our purpose is to serve God. And then, here's the thing. Serving God is serving God's people. None of us are an island. It's in the word. We all are here to work together. So like you said, um, when it comes down to, to parents and having a village, we're like links, you know, um, we're, we're connected. And so understand this, if there's somebody in your life, um, they're meant to be in your life. There's purpose. Um, mm-hmm. I talk about that and I don't want to go off on a rent, but I am going to say when it comes down to your family, that's your first ministry, because you could have been a part of any family, but God put you in this family that you're in. And so there's purpose in it. You're connected to these people for a reason. So the first ministry is family, but then God will be removing and replacing people in and out of your life constantly throughout your life because there's a purpose and it could be a purpose for you or for them, but the, but your purpose is to serve. So always be, have always have a servant mindset, which is basically not what I can get because God's going to take care of that, but what I can give, because at mm-hmm. the end of the day, we can always share something with someone that they may not know. And someone can always share something with us that we may not know. So I'm going to get out my soapbox on that. 
Nah, okay. you good? So, <laughs> so when it comes down to purpose, we're serving God through serving his people. Now, here's the, the, the best part about it that you can connect to. You have a gift, okay? So mm-hmm. we talked about purpose, but let's talk about gifts. So we all don't have the same gift. Some of us, and it's in his word, some of us have a gift of giving. Some of us have a gift of teaching. Some of us have a gift. We all have different gifts. And so when it comes down to knowing what your gift is, it's simple. What do you do with an innate ability? That means naturally. What is something that you do naturally that you that you that you enjoy, that gives you joy, that people, you may not even notice that you're doing it consistently, but people say, every time I see you, you're giving. Every mm-hmm. time I see you, you're teaching, you're loving, you're, you know, so it's that simple. I think that because society has created so many different advertisements and distractions about things, uh, being a rapper, being this, being that, and not saying that your gift is not for you to sing, okay? But just know that whatever your gift is, that it's your gift. We all have different gifts, but that's what we use in serving. And so our, our purpose is to serve. And then our gift is whatever God has given us as in an ability to be able to do, to be able to see it manifested or to see it to produce something in our lives as well as the people's lives that God has blessed to be around us. Okay, so then, so then, and you know, you have other things. Uh, you know, we have purpose, we have our gifts, and then we have, um, you know, our destinations, our destiny, things like that. But mm-hmm. I will say for me, um, and we have calling. So, and we, we can get into that another time as well, but our calling is simply something that God, you know, that God has appointed you for, you know, that God, you know, because this is, uh, the ministry, you know, we have to know thyself, know thy God, know thy ministry, you know, not in that order. Cause it's know thy God first, know thyself, and then know our ministry. That's what we're going to be putting our hands to do the work that God has mm-hmm. placed before us. So anyways, because we can talk about that forever, right, sis? <laughs> we can. Um, we can. So I'm going to say that um, I talked about the pivotal point in my life was knowing God, but then he's revealed to me who I am by looking at myself through how he sees me, through his yes, eyes. Ma'am. And that's not always easy because, of course, we have the things that people have said to us, taught us, because um, growing up, family teach you two things how you're supposed to treat people and how people are supposed to treat you. And so depending on the way you were raised in your upbringing, then you have to make a decision. Like you said, Mm -hmm. am I going to carry these things along with me or am I going to carry on something else for the generation to come? You know, and so I'm a generational shifter. So when you talk about my purpose and my calling, God has called me to be a generational shifter. And what that means is I'm bringing in a generation. I'm inspiring a generation, my cousins, my nieces, my son, um, uh, students that I'm mentoring in my job, uh, younger people, our youth, like you. um, I'm bringing in and inspiring a generation, but I'm also holding on to uh, the things, or I won't say holding on, but I'm also building off of the foundation from my ancestors, the people who came before me, my mother, the generations that came before me, I'm building mm-hmm. off of the things that they have placed inside of me that's good ground, you know, the foundation. I am building on that. So I know that I'm a generational shifter. That's something that God has called me, which means that I'm breaking generational curses yeah, and I am yeah. turning them into generational blessings. Hello, the generational consequences, the generational bondages, they're no more. They're stopping yeah, with yeah. me, and that is a huge responsibility. But the blessing that's going to come from it, I'm going to be able to see it in my children's children, and my nieces, and my nephews. And so, um, so I'm a generational shifter. I also know that my purpose is to serve, um, and sisters impacting and serving is little sis. And so, with that ministry, uh, what God has placed in my heart to do is to empower women around me through sisterhood and basically what that looks like is all of the experiences that I've uh, had a blessing to be able to experience I'm using what I've experienced to pass along to other women to mothers to sisters to uh women entrepreneurs uh to be able to be transparent and be able to be a vessel in saying, sis, I went through that, I made it through that. And it, it started simply from 
um, people, women always, you know, speaking to me about things that they're going through and allowing me to encourage them. Mm -hmm. Uh, simply speaking to a neighbor, you have to be, you have to watch everything around you. Like I was living in a place and there were four women around me that were neighbors. They didn't know each other, but I had to realize that all four of them talked to me. They knew me. And I really feel like God put me in that particular place at that time, those three years I lived there, to be able to minister and speak to these women. And I was sitting on my back porch talking to someone who was experiencing abuse, which I had already been through. Uh, I was married and went through abuse. And um, and I was able to leave that marriage. And so someone who was experiencing uh, something that I had been through, sitting on the back porch talking to her, and she said, you know, you should have a women's group. And that's that was it. And I'm telling mm-hmm. you, you got to listen when people say stuff because God will use anybody to anybody. say something to you to get a message through to you. And that's how Lil Sis was birthed. And of course, Sis, because everyone was saying like, Sis, 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 but I had to put some to it. Sisters impacting and serving, you know, and that's basically, like I said, empowering women through sisterhood because I'm telling you right now, it's all about the vision when it comes down to women. We want to, uh, we want to be jealous. We want to be envious. Uh, the, the enemy is trying to, um, how can I say, um, divide us. But mm-hmm. but that's because he knows that we're a force together. Think of every woman that's powerful that you know and them coming together. Just It's so much power there. And so uh, empowering women through sisterhood. And so, like I said, it was birth. And I've been obedient. And so God is still showing me how he wants me to move. But right now it's through mentorship. It's through motivational speaking. It's through meetings. We have meetings uh, um, as often as I can. And we, excuse me, we also uh, can, um, we have resources that we can connect women to as far as therapy, counseling. um, And we have a healing workshop every year. And so just just using my experiences that God has delivered me out of and that I've been through to be able to encourage and empower other women. And then um, and then also one of the other things is simply understanding that I have the gift of speaking, <laughs> which you can clearly see, um, <laughs> but being able to use my words to edify God and encourage uh, anybody. It's not yeah, just about yeah. women because that was my thing. I was like, well, God, you know, I know that I can encourage and empower women because I'm a woman and I've lived through it. But then what about men? Because of course I've had men is like, what about us? Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And so it's about God's people as a whole. And so at, when I'm speaking and mentoring, I'm able to do that to anyone. Um, that, there's no yeah. barriers on the gifts that God gave us. Like, yes. that, there's no barriers, and I think it's interesting. Like sometimes we uh, we allow those small little things, like trying to structure things, to stop us. We allow it to be like, oh, let me. Uh, I said women, so maybe I just got stuff here. You don't. Whoa. It's just that's just where you specialize in. Come you on, specialize man. in women. But Come you on. specialize in people too. Mom, so I love that. That was a word you can for do me. It all. <laughs> that was a word you can for do me. It. I'm so serious. <laughs> word for me. Yeah, you can do it. You can do whatever you want to do, uh, whatever God's calling you to do. And like at the end of the day, the, the gift flows. It's an overflow effect. So at the end of the day, we're just gonna do His work. And whoever is supposed to catch it is going to catch it. Come on now. <laughs> at the right place at the right time. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> True. Um, I think I think it's amazing, though. Like, you, you're you doing exactly what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to live it. Yeah. You make it through it. Testifying is literally you going through it and then testifying Ooh. about it. So you're actually testifying about it through your actions, too. So yeah. that's the that's really beautiful because that that shows God that He can trust you, and anything mm-hmm. that He gives you will pass through your hands to other people, and that mm-hmm. that's the most amazing thing for real. Because I, a lot I of people gatekeep. Yeah. Oh, we. So I'm proud of you for doing that for real because you yeah. could definitely you could have just took your 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 scars and been you know done. Yeah, yeah, and you know something that was mentioned today. I'm glad that you said that because you know. uh, 
the enemy wants us to stay unhealed and the enemy wants us to stay uh bound and not not live free because yeah. he wants us to bleed out you know why he wants us to bleed out because once we're healed we're able to show people our scars to let yeah. them know what we've made it through and where they can go yeah and i'm gonna say that again the enemy wants to keep us unhealed and bound so that we can bleed out because if we heal we have a scar to prove where we've been and where others are capable of going if they do the same thing and so you know i i really 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 and it's again i don't want people to look at us and think that this is easy or that Mm -hmm. it's gonna happen change doesn't just happen you have to create change you do you gotta create a change and it takes discipline and, and hard work and so like creating that change it it was difficult for me because i didn't want to get started and i'm gonna tell you why i looked at what god was trying to do for me and i remember my husband telling me like you're going to be speaking in front of millions i was like "Mm, yeah ain't something that i want to do it ain't always what you want to do when god reveals something to you you might say how i'm gonna do that or you you might say i don't want to do that but that's what God has for you, and you have to embrace it. And once you're on that journey, you will he'll start showing you and giving you things and resources and putting things in place for you. But I said that to say that um, when when God first started revealing these things to me, I was like, me? How? When I'm still going through a struggle. And guess what? I'm still going through a struggle right now. But I'm yep. telling you, because yep. I don't want to be a hypocrite, because I got to be real with myself first, and that's the best thing. When you can be real with yourself, that's the that's the only way you're gonna be able to address the things that you don't like about yourself or the things that make you uncomfortable as a leader and being a servant because you know that people are watching you and you don't want to be that person that you know is like this is not it's it's not fake it's not a front it's not and sometimes even when I'm motivating myself I have to be real with myself and say are you giving it your best are you doing mm-hmm. because I have to address it and so I said that to say like. I remember when God was first showing me things and I was just like, I don't, I don't know that I can do that. I don't, I don't know that that's for me because how do you want me to help a woman to be empowered and I'm broken? Yeah. How do you want me to teach a woman how to forgive someone who has caused her pain, but I'm in pain? Yeah. God, yeah. make it make sense. And you know what yeah. he did? He made it make sense. And I was like, okay. okay. Yeah. And you know what I always say? I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Like, even now, just, like, the struggle. And I have to be like, but it's bigger than me. Yeah. But it's, it's bigger, bigger than me. It's yeah. not about me. It's about what God is doing through me. It's the answers. I have, when, on the days, I have days now that I don't want to get out of bed. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. I got I have to. And then once I do feel much better yeah that's the thing that's the thing i would i want to say this because i think a lot of people feel like they have to be at a certain space to to be able to serve and in reality you got to be willing that's it because a lot of (laughs) that's it that's the only requirement um a lot of times when it comes to whatever god is doing he's going to use the areas where you're broken to to help you minister to other people so i always say that those cracks that are in my heart from the 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 heartbreaks yeah. That's how his light gets out. Wow. That's how I look at. That's you how see, I look can at you it. You see this light, right? Like this <laughs> glare. You, yeah, you, I've been seeing it the whole time. And when you just said that, I just got this like feeling that came through my body. That's like God is standing. Like I just feel like he, like his presence, like he's standing behind me, saying, "It don't matter what you've been through. This little light of mine." Yeah, I'm a little shocked because he in me, and it's like the things that people see. Remember, we talked about imposter syndrome. It's like we know the things that we've been through, yeah. and so we think that we're not good enough, we're not strong enough, we're not brave enough, we're too broken, we're too bad. You know, we mm-hmm. think we're too scarred, we're damaged, all these things. But this little light that God placed mm-hmm. inside us is still there. So those broken pieces is what allow our light to shine through. And it's so crazy because here we are, even today, I'm thinking I'm a sinner. I'm yeah, thinking yeah. I'm a, I'm struggling. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. I got addictions and habits that I got to break. But mm-hmm. these, this light, this light, it don't stop. It don't, it don't. stop. And so when I'm broken, when I'm cracked, when I'm unhealed, when I'm not, when I'm striving to do better, 
and even in my thriving, like that light is still going to shine because it it's is, in it. us, it's on us, is and and you have it too. The listeners mm-hmm. that's out there, you have it too, and that's why people see things in us that we're not able to see. It's them cracks. Shining God's light through us, right? Yep. Yep. Oh my God. Those, those cracks, those cracks are really, and I, and I'll say, I'll say this too. When it comes to like, um, working through the things that you're dealing with while still having to serve, um, Jesus did it too. So, <laughs> I, it, like, anytime, anytime, I'm not saying that we're Jesus. Nah, let's, yeah, yeah. don't, don't misquote me, people. Nah, because yeah. we're not yeah. Him. So, yeah. Jesus is Him and Him alone. Yeah. But, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but I feel like I feel like when it comes down to like doing the work that God is calling you to do, understanding that the light is in there and you had the pri- privilege of seeing it in real time, um, that's the one thing that keeps I can speak for me that keeps me going because I if I never saw him his hand in the moment in real time, yeah. I probably wouldn't be as um, focused or intentional about making sure that I'm doing the things he called me to do. It's not about me. It's not about you people listen it's not about you either Absolutely. it's literally just about being a vessel and allow him to use you in any way that he sees fit because at the end of the day jesus came to die so that you can have life like the real life that you're supposed to have and he's waiting on you to say yes and to decide so he can show you throughout a series of things in life not just yeah. one moment yeah that yeah. yeah so yeah absolutely i love i love that you said that because when uh, again in your preparation email you was like what is what is something that you live by you know mm-hmm. and so uh what are you saying what's the what's your mantra you know mm-hmm. and so uh one of the things that and this this is actually um the slogan or if have you uh for lyricists is um don't just exist Mm-hmm. live sis and living in victory every day is what i'm saying because here's the thing and there's a song out right now that say live your best life and they say it's good to be alive but it's best to live yeah. it's a difference it's a, difference. It's a big difference With, yes every morning that god wakes you up you have an opportunity to be and to do whatever it is that is going to create a space for you to be able to live and live life more abundantly than the day before. And so I said that to say that when that that's that's what I'm literally trying to accomplish right now. Not that's what that you're I'm doing. Just waking up. That, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Every, yeah. every day that I'm waking up, I am living because existing, I'm not a vegetable. Mm-mm. I have the activity of my limbs, my mind, you know, um, even the days that I feel like there's a lot on my mind. I'm thankful because yeah. I have it. I have my mind. And so I said that to say that, like, like not just existing and really being intentional about living life, it will help. It will help you to change your physical being. It will help you to want to eat healthier. It will yeah. help you to want to um, take care of your mental health. It'll help you to try to manage your emotions differently and not allow your emotions to manage you, <laughs> you know, yeah. but it, it will create, you know, so many different aspects of living. I would say that, um, you know, just, just, I would say um, time management life management, all of those things will contribute to you living a life that that you desire to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, and it all starts with you understanding who God is and and who you are in Christ, because at the end of the day, like we take our cues from, from God, God is the one who created us. Jesus is the ultimate example. Yeah. He literally, literally, yeah. Literally the ultimate example, he was all man and all God at the same time. And then you got the Holy Spirit that lives within you. Whenever you say yes to God, God sends that help, that help in you. So the Holy Spirit lives in you and gives you the instructions. It's like a play by play every day. It may not be something you want to do, but he going to tell you like, hey, yeah, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> like, like, Ooh, in the midst. I'm talking about the words right there. <laughs> it's already out. It's already halfway out. But, yeah, but, <laughs> but no, <laughs> seriously though. And all seriously though, like I really, I, I'm on one this this week for real about that because I'm just like at the end, I hear a lot of students talk to me about, you know, 
wanting to understand what's going on and how to move and they, they feel like they're not hearing God. I'm like, did you do the last thing he told you to do? Or are you in your word? Because at the end of the day, if you reading, even if you're not comprehending fully what what is happening, you got to consistently do that so that you can get used to identifying God's character and understanding like what how he moves. Yeah. Then you'll understand you. Yeah. After you oh, understand him. Goodness. Yes. So now, yeah. Remember we said life is life, but God yeah. is God. Absolutely. Not only G O D guiding. 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 G U I D I N G. Guiding you. Mm-hmm. And so you have to let them. And so one of the things whenever I get questions, I, I do, I've had, you know, someone say, well, How do I know that God is speaking to me? And and there are many ways, but I can say two things for me. One is, if it's something that I'm just thinking or something that someone is saying, um, then it's like, I'll think about it and it goes away. Yeah. When it's something that God is saying, it's constantly, constantly, it everywhere I look, everywhere I go. But mm-hmm. again, and I know you shared this with me and we talked about this, we have to clear the palate. And what that looks like is guarding the doors of our minds, mm-hmm. uh, our ear gates our hearts because mm-hmm. the things that we take in will interrupt our manifestation because man everything starts with a thought and mm-hmm. then once once we think it we start to speak it we start to walk in it and then it becomes our reality that's manifestation so here's the thing whatever you hear mm-hmm. whatever you listen to whatever you take in it's feeding your in your inner being and what it's doing is creating a reality for you and you don't even have to, because that's the thing about intentionality. God is intentional, but then we have to understand that everything that we allow to be a distraction to us, because distractions are are made to distract us, but they don't have to be a distraction. They don't. They yeah, don't. If you allow it to come in. So the music that we listen to, the things that we watch on TV, the things that we take part of in social media, all of those things, you have to guard the doors of your mind because what you're letting in is affecting your thoughts and what you're thinking is becoming your reality. And so one of the things that I would like to say to those um, youth or to anyone that's listening, if you can't hear God, start by clearing your space. That's your mental space, the things in your house, Mm -hmm. that get your house in order. I know that, you know, you can take that however you need to, but, uh, Get get your mind. Uh, it, it has to take a mind shift. Shift your mind onto things that are of God, and then that's how you welcome Him in. If there are things in your heart that you need to get out to allow space for Him to come in, so you gotta give Him. You gotta invite Him in. And so yeah. the way to do that is to clear your mind of things that are not of Him. I'm not saying you have to be holy. That is what we want. That is what we want for ourselves to be holy, to live righteous and all of those things, but it's a process. So the first thing is to get those things out of your mind, get those things out of your heart, and then you will see them to start disappearing from your life. But guess Mm -hmm. what God's going to do? He's going to come in and replace them with things that are of him. And that's when you start to experience that joy. You'll start to experience that happiness because we're responsible for our own happiness. But you have to give him the space to come in by clearing out things that are not of him. So the things that we listen to, the things that we watch, the things that we involve ourselves in on social media, including people that are in your life. If you have somebody negative around you that's always speaking negative, you're going to have negative thoughts. If you have some, so place, place positive people and things around you. Um, And then you also mentioned uh, just like other, other ways, like maybe I'm not hearing them. How do I know? So once mm-hmm. you you cleared that space to invite him in, then the next thing is to listen with intention. Absolutely. Be mindful. So that means if something is around you, I'm driving down the street and I'm reading billboards. I'm reading the, the titles of books because you never know when God is going to reveal something to you and listen to what people say. Even Kason at five years old have said something to me that God was trying to give me a message about. And when we're praying, pray with an open heart and pray with a heart of like, you know, the reason why you and I know so much about each other and know, you know, what we know is because we communicate. Okay, well, that's how you communicate with God. Talk to Mm -hmm. him from your heart. And when you're talking to him, ask him to show you these things. Give me insight, God. Give me knowledge. Give me wisdom. You know, uh, show me. 
because but when you're asking him to show you you have to be looking for things because he's gonna he's gonna god is gonna do his part he's gonna show you in every way that he can but you have to be able to see it in every way that you possibly can absolutely yeah that's that's absolutely true you got you have to be looking for it and be intentional and and if you ever if you ever feel like um you gotta question it just be like (laughs) if you ever feel like you gotta question like I had to laugh. If you ever gotta feel like if you you gotta question something that you're about to do or you're doing, Ooh. just ask yourself: Is this gonna honor God? Would I do it right in front of Him? Because because I mean, it's really that simple. It's really that simple. We we complicate this and it's not complicated. We make this the this part should be the easy part. You know, defining what we supposed to do should be the easy part. Now walking it out is the harder part because you have all of the circumstances around you, but. Knowing what you need to do, we all know what we need to do. It's just making the decision to do it. Like it, that's it. That's it. I'm telling you, I'm yeah. laughing because <laughs> I am tested, and 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 I want people to also know that tests are not a. They're not a. Um, they're not pretty, but they're not to work against you. It's mm. not working against you. It's working for you. When you go through tests, we have to embrace those things because we want to see what's on the other side. And know mm-hmm. that when you keep going through something, if you don't get it right, you're going to go through it in a different way. It's going to be the same test, you know, for you different to learn face. a lesson, a different face, I'm telling you. And so mm-hmm. um, we have to, you know, go through those things. I don't care what it is. If it's singleness, you know, it's, it, we look at it as an inconvenience, but it's not. It's a process that God needs us to go through. So I love it. Way. <laughs> loving it and, and that can be for anyone because even yeah. like, you know, I'm going through a season of singleness right now and I'm married so it doesn't mm-hmm. it's not about a relationship status it's about getting to know who God is so you can know who you are so that when God does put you with that person yeah, it's, yeah. it's beautiful and so you know what, whatever it is whatever season you're in right now take these tests and and deal with them with intention because that's the only way you're going to be able to see what's on the other side. And I promise it's greater. It gets greater later. These it sure tests, does. These, yeah, these test trials and tribulations are tough. But I'm telling you, the blessing that comes afterwards, man, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. It's so the worth blessing. it. Ooh, it's, so worth it. it. It's, it's worth so it. Worth it's worth it. It's so worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. tell me, I always have to ask every guest this, okay. um, if if money was no object, like, I always like to say the sky is the starting line. So if money was no object, what would the goal be? What would you be doing? So money is not an object. Mm-hmm. I, I, I thank God that I've gotten to that mental space. Mm-hmm. Um, because we, we do, we hear people say, um, well, I just can't do that right now because I don't have the money. Or I don't have the resources, or I don't. But I'm telling you to lean into that faith. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, and this is, I mean, you and I talked about this, like, I don't know. And it could be because, and I'm thankful for my husband because he helped me to see um, the value of money in a different yeah. way. Um, I, I, I've always been the type of person, you, you could say living paycheck to paycheck or however you want to say it. And it's not even about the amount of money that's being made or the amount of money that's our household income. It's not about that. What it's about is when God wants you to do something, he's not going to let nothing stand in your way of doing it. Once you give him your yes and you give him obedience, he's not. So, and, and, and I guess I'll put it like this. Money is an object. You know, it is an object. But it's not um it's not a hindrance. Right. And the reason why I say that is because anything that I that I know that God is calling me to do and I do it, He's gonna provide. He has provided, He's made ways for me that I'm telling you, strangers walking up to me, handing me money, and I feel like I was good at the time. But there's always also been some times where I didn't know how I was gonna make it. And because God provided for me, it, it gave me this mindset where I don't think of money as like, don't get me wrong, we have responsibilities, we have to pay our bills. And I'm not saying that I got it in the bank. <clears throat> but what right. I am saying is God is my bank. And, yeah. and yeah. I know that I can go to him and say, okay, God. And even to the point now, um, anything that I'm doing, like traveling or anything, 
I say, and I and I'll even um I've gotten God has given me this boldness from the things that He's shown me that He will make ways to where when somebody asks me something, like to do something or if it's something, I'll say, Well, okay, well, you know, how is it gonna be taken care of? Or and the reason why I ask that is because I really wanna see God. I want to that's the invitation. Like I really wanna see God work it out because I don't have to tell him my finances, he knows. Mm-hmm. And so what I do is go ahead and and let it be known, like, okay, well, how, uh, this this is something that's financially going to need to take place in order for me to be able to do this. So how are we going to deal with that? And then out, out of out of God's processes come, oh, you don't have to worry about that, or oh, that's taken care of. And mm-hmm. so when it comes down to anything that's serving God, and when I got to the point where I was telling people, if it's not about God. Absolutely. And that's something I'm still learning how to do. But the reason why I do and say that is because if it when it's when it's for him and of him, he's gonna make a way. Money is never anything that will stand in the way of what God needs to take place. It may be that it has to uh, sometimes it may be that it has to be planned for a later time because things do take processes, but it's never been a no when it's about doing what taking you know God's business. When they say stand on business, God's business. And when mm-hmm. you stand on when you stand on God's business, money is not. It's an object but it's never a hindrance or never stopping anything, you know? Yeah. Cause we yeah. he he gave us a uh, dominion anyway. So yeah. at the end of the day it's a it's currency. It's gonna pass through. Come on now. It's currency. So Come on now. yeah. At the end of the day, the, the moral <laughs> of the story, guys, it's, it's God's <laughs> money. So you know, we we are part of the kingdom, so we straight. Um, yeah. but um, <laughs> the the moral of the story is though, truly, at the end of the day, the more that you connect with God, the more that you learn His His character, and you know, allow Him to guide your life. He will provide, and it it's not gonna always be pretty, but it's only building your character. So. Yeah. You gotta have a mindset that, you know, of course we always want more, but mm-hmm. be okay with what you have. Yeah. I don't have everything I want, you know, so. I sure don't. Yeah, when we, <laughs> that question, I love that question. I love the fact that you give us the opportunity to answer that from different perspectives because, again, like I said, uh, perspectives, because I used to be the woman that would just go, I had to have something. If it was whatever, I'm not like materialistic as far as like bags and name brands and shoes and things like that because of the way that I was raised. My grandmother said it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's clean and it looks nice, you know. Uh, and so I've always lived that way. Um, and I do, I have experienced living above my means before, but I also am grateful now that I realize that uh, uh, money uh, is something that we used to acquire the things that we want. But having God helps us to acquire the things that we really need. And so, mm-hmm. like, when I know that I have the things that I need and that he provides them, it, it changes my mindset to be be okay with the things that I have, knowing that there's going to come a time where all of the desires of my heart that God is going to add them. But right now, I, I'm, I'm good because I can focus on what God is calling me to do, knowing that everything that I say I want, I'm be able to have because mm-hmm. of my obedience and because of my yes, you know. In his timing. Yeah, yeah. In his yeah. timing. Yeah. Well, tell me, tell me what's coming up next. What we got going on? Any products or anything that you want to share right now? Um, and I do not have it here with me, but um, I tabled for the very first time as a vendor at the Shift Her 2024 Women's Symposium. Um, um, Minister Mona Riggs. It was a, it was a shifting <laughs> experience, and so that was my first time tabling as a vendor. And I created, um, I I created the um, I don't have one here with me, but I created the affirmations frame. And so what this affirmation frame is is something that I was already giving members of Livesis. Um, and so what, what it is, is affirmations that you would speak over your life every, every day. Um, and I give it as a, as a gift and it's just about a four by six frame and it has affirmations, positive affirmations for women and you speak it. I have it, I always give it to them and tell them to put it somewhere where they're going to 
be or that they're going to see it every day. And all we're doing is speaking those affirmations over ourselves. And then I also will have an affirmation frame. And so that's going to be affirming the things that we're speaking, which basically means to allow the space to be able to bring those things into form by our mm-hmm. actions to match our words. Like you said, our actions and our words have to match up in order to be able to make it a reality. So um, affirmation frame, affirmation frames. But like I said, I stayed up the night before. I created 10 frames, you know, I spirit led, created 10 frames. And then before um, the event was halfway at the break, I had most of those sold. And then I gave out the last four as gifts. Um, but I said that to say that, you know, you never know. If you just be obedient, you never know what a product or, you know, something that's going to become um useful to anyone else this is just something that i've always done i printed out those affirmations and i would read them and it helped me and then i said i want to pass this along and so i started giving it to members of lives whenever they you know became a part of the sisterhood but then at the event i literally left there with none of them i stayed up the night before creating them and so i will uh put those on my website and they're seven dollars but it's affirmation frames and you can you can get yours and it's uh affirmation as a matter of fact I have a gift for you, I'll get that to you. But uh, oh, that's so, sweet. so that and then um as far as um like you know, you mentioned that I'm gonna be graduating May seventh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and then from there, I'm going to go and get my certification as an LCDC, which is a licensed uh, chemical dependency counselor. And so substance, uh, a substance abuse counselor. And then in the meantime, I am a, uh, a women coach. So a women empowerment coach. I have sessions available through, uh, uh, Calendly. So that information is on my website and then also, uh, flyers that will be going out on social media for uh, women to be able to connect with me. I just wanted to make sure that I uh, made the time and had the availability. Uh, So when I graduate, it will free up my schedule some. And so I'll be able to offer those sessions. And it's not about money for me. So it will be like $30 sessions for 30 minutes and $50 sessions for 50 minutes, whatever it is that clients would need. Uh, to receive that empowerment and that encouragement. And so coaching, I am still uh, doing motivational speaking. Uh, I also speak um, every other week at Tarrant County College. I am the co-lead of the Intercultural Network. So uh, as far as like student um, empowerment and then student engagement, basically speaking with our chancellors and our presidents about what our students' needs are on campus, advocating for our students to say these are things that could be tools or these are things that can be, you know, um, added to our curriculum and things there so that we will be able to give students what they need. Um, and so I, I know that God is doing some really great things, uh, honestly. I don't even know everything that's in store. <laughs> that's how you know wherever you're on the right God path. Take me, yes, and, and and wherever God takes me, and He's steady un, unfolding things. <laughs> yeah. So as far as lives is in the ministry, um, we're always definitely um, inviting women to be a part of our ministry, and I am still God is still working with me on how this will be structured and how it will be carried out because my goal is to bring women together uh starting with my family and and bringing my family together and so it's a, it's, it's in the works since I'm I'm really 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 grateful for uh for God bringing us together you know and I, I can't recall. I'm, I'm just so grateful. Like, I was just thinking about it today because I remember when you first asked me to be a part of, to be interviewed on your podcast, and I was literally going through, that was around the time where I was just getting into my journey of, mm-hmm. you know, being more, like, intentional about my relationship with God and recognizing my growth and all these things. And so I was really fearful. I was operating in fear. And mm-hmm. whenever you asked me, I wanted to, of course, but more than anything, it blew my mind because I said, 
what did she see? And I'm like, what, what, what I do? That light? What do I the have light? to say? And I remember telling you that. And so even today, I feel that that's a testimony in itself because here I am today not operating in fear. Today, Whereas when you first asked me, I was like, oh, I'm afraid I don't know. Today, it was like, ain't nothing stopping me. Ain't yeah. nothing, that, that's the testimony, like ain't nothing stopping me. So I thank God not only that you are being intentional and obedient in your calling, but that you give us that whenever you you do what you're doing, what God has called you to do, you give us that inspiration and that motivation. And I thank God for connecting us. This is connection, you know, and that's what about that's what Live Sis is about, empowering one another. Me, me reaching you reaching out to me and me reaching back saying, you know, I know that this is something that God has to look at look at everything that's happening with the recording right now. Like, you know, it's God or day. Yeah. And nothing yeah. can stand in the way of it. But I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful because like just you reaching out and then me giving God my yes, me giving you my yes is a testimony to what Live Sis is about. It's is yeah, sisters impacting and serving. And I know, yeah. I know this this message is impactful, and all of the messages that has been brought on you interviewing us have been impactful, and we're serving. We're serving. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate. I really appreciate you too, and I'm very grateful for it as well because um, just being able to sit down to te- to talk to someone that's like minded and that understands what it takes to like hold the weight of what God has given us is very. It, that's very rare because you don't always meet people that are kind of like doing the same things. That's why it's important to connect connect with people, uh, even if they're doing the same things that you're doing, especially if they're doing the same things you're doing. Yeah. Um, because that's even more of a greater community. So, I appreciate you saying yes, and I, it was exactly what I knew it was gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> and and I and I definitely feel like it, you're just getting started. Like the more like you're just getting started. Like I can't wait to see what else God like drops on you because he got he good at that pop pop be like oh, message do this for me message yeah message. i can't wait to see what else he, he um he brings on you because i see i see books i see conferences i see workshops i see all of that so yeah i'm excited for you thank you so much for coming on thank you for having me god bless you and likewise and everything that you pour out i know that god is pouring back into you i see you I'm shine queen shine is what I have to say <laughs> because I see you doing it and it and it's inspirational to us and it's motivational and I know that behind the scenes there's a lot going on that we don't get to see this and so I want you to stay encouraged because it's it's making a difference and we're and we're leveling up. Mm-hmm. Did you catch yeah, that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and listen, at every level, remember what we talked about. It's like it's like it's just like a video game. Every level you're using the tools that you're learning to pass these tests and then God is gonna level you up, but know that that just as the greatness is getting greater, the tests are gonna get greater. But we mm-hmm. have the tools and we have the tips and we have God's blessing to carry us through whatever it is so that we can continue to level up. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely definitely receive that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely receive that. It's a lot, but we're gonna get it done. Yeah, right. I can't. Wait, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for it because it's it's motivating me and inspiring me. I'm so serious. I'm looking. I'm looking for it, and I'm passing it along. I'm like, y'all tap in now. My sis over there saying everything we need. Spirit, <laughs> <laughs> don't miss. I appreciate that.